All right, in this video, we're going to talk about solving a rational equation. And in the process, it's a good review of how to simplify rational expressions as they sort of turn up in the process of solving. So it says solve for x, and we have to identify any extraneous solutions. So we'll deal with that when the time comes. If you look at this rational expression, What's sort, of a core, what's sort of annoying about it is x is kind of in all over the place. It's up here, it's down here. The variable's kind of scattered, so that's a problem. We want to try to isolate it if we can. Secondly, uh, it's tempting. A lot of students think you can just kind of cross multiply here, but that is not possible because that three here, that three out in front, prevents you from simply you know, treating this like a proportion and cross multiplying. So don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, I'm going to sort of teach you a way to solve this equation so that you never really are tempted to do that. Okay, so, so what do we do? Well, my technique is to get a common denominator, get a common denominator so that we're looking at something like this. This is just a simple example of what I'm going for. If I gave you like um, four, uh, if I give you like four fifths equals x over 10. Right? And this is a very simple example. It's not immediately obvious what x is equal to, right? But if we sort of made the denominators on the left and the right the same, the answer, I think, would just uh, jump out at us. So what I mean is, this is a denominator of a 10. Is there any way I could turn 4 fifths into a, a fraction that has a denominator of 10? And I think if you just multiply the top and then the bottom by 2, you, you get 8 over 10 equals x over 10. And now it's, it's really no secret. With the, we don't have to do any work now. The, the answer is staring us in the face. If 8 over 10 equals x over 10, we can just sort of set these numerators equal. Clearly, x is equal to 10. So that's the technique I'm going for over here. It's just a little more difficult because we're dealing with uh, rational expressions, not numbers. But the process is the same. So the first thing is I gotta, I gotta turn the left side into, as, uh, into one fraction. So how do I do that? Well this 3, it's gonna be useful to view it as like 3 over 1. That way I have a fraction adding to a fraction. Now what I want to do is I want to get a common denominator because you can't add fractions unless they have a common denominator. So what's the, com what's the common denominator? And in fact the least common denominator is usually the idea. Uh, well, it's kind of hard to tell. We got to kind of build it. So first, we have to identify what all the factors of our numerators are in the problem. So that's a one that doesn't need to be factored. X squared minus four can factor to x plus two times x minus two, and then this x plus two is just an x plus two. So now what I do is I build my common denominator. So my common denominator needs a one but I don't need to put that. It needs an x plus 2 and an x minus 2. And it needs an x plus 2, but I don't need to put an x plus 2 again because uh, it's already here, so I don't really need to write it again. And now what I do is I just make all my fractions have the, the common denominator. So this 1 is missing everything. So I need to multiply the top and the bottom of this by x plus 2 and x minus 2. Make sure you do both the top and the bottom. This guy's done because it, its denominator is the common denominator. And this x plus 2, what's it missing that the common denominator has? It's missing an x minus 2. So x minus 2, I'm going to multiply the bottom by and the top by x minus 2. Notice I'm putting in the parentheses because you don't want to, sometimes the way you write things down can confuse you as to what you're doing. We're multiplying 4x by x minus 2, the quantity x minus 2. And so if you rewrite what I have now, this is what I have. I've got 3 times, now x plus 2, x minus 2. Right, I can write that out, but it also is x, x squared minus 4, right, if you multiply that out. So I want to just write, this is 3 times this multiplied out, 3 times x squared minus 4, divided by x squared minus 4, 
plus 32 over x squared minus 4, and that equals 4x times x minus 2 divided by, uh, actually, let's do this. Uh, x plus 2 times x minus 2 is, of course, x squared minus 4. So again, yeah, the, the common denominator has, you know, the factored version and the expanded out version. So we're really almost in a good situation now. I just want to, I'm going to add these fractions so that I only have one fraction on the left. And they have a common denominator, so I can do that. When you add those together, you get 3 times x squared minus 4 plus 32 all over x squared minus 4, and that's equal to 4x times x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. And here is where we're, this, this is where we want to be, because look, we've got a quantity over x squared minus 4 equal to another quantity over x squared minus 4. We're in this situation. So I can really forget about those and set the numerators equal. And so what that'll do is allow me to write this as 3 times x squared minus 4 plus 32 equal to 4x times x minus 2. And this is a lot easier. This problem is a lot easier. I mean, it looks kind of crazy still, but it's a lot easier now because we don't have any fractions. And I'm just going to kind of clean things up. I'm going to do this a little quickly because I think you all should be able to take it from here. This is 3x squared minus 12 plus 32, and that's equal to 4x squared minus 8x. And now we've got a We've got it's a, it's a quadratic over here, quadratic over here. Let's just get all the everything on one side. So I'm going to subtract 3x squared from both sides. And this is now a, a negative 12 plus 32 is just 20. So that's 20 equal to x squared minus 8x. And now let's subtract 20 from both sides. So I get 0 equals x squared minus 8x minus 20. But that can factor to I think x minus 10 x plus 2 which means x equals negative 2 or 10. Okay, so from here on, it's, this, is, this shouldn't be too new. Just getting this, setting this situation up so that you're looking at a, a fraction equal to a fraction where they have the same denominators. So you can set the numerators equal. Uh, the last thing we got to check for before you just kind of circle the answer and move on is are there any extraneous solutions? Typically, this isn't so painful to check because um, you, you really just want to figure out if there if you found an answer that sort of in theory works but in actuality doesn't. So what I mean by that is when I plug negative 2 back into this expression, the problem is I get negative 2 plus 2 which equals 0. I get an expression over here that is not defined. So this function over here on the right is not defined at x equals negative 2. So that can't be an answer. That can't be an answer. Okay. What we're really, we're, we're really finding is like this, this is a graph. On this, this the right side of this equation is a graph. The left side is a graph. When do they intersect? They can't intersect at x equals negative 2 because the right-hand side is not defined at x equals negative 2. So they can't intersect where a function, they can't intersect if one of them isn't defined there. Turns out this one isn't defined there either. So... Um, so that means 10 is our, is our only solution. All right, so there's, a, there's again, another, uh, we, we kind of got a lot of stuff in there, like we had um, 
how to add rational expressions. That's something you're gonna, that's going to be important later on. Uh, solving a quadratic. All right, so solving rational expressions uh, has a lot in there. And I hope this example kind of walks you through um, all of those all those steps.